Hello. It is Wednesday. It is uh, like no other week. You know, we've, we've come uh, to this point in our journey where we love to explore emotions and uh, connect with people, connect with you watching us here. I don't know why I get this voice where it's very calm and serene, but that's what it is. So we're here uh, every Wednesday in our journey here at Studio 110, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, RCO Network. With me as always, I am Rob Morales, but I am my esteemed and uh, beautiful co-host, Miss Mary. Ben. <laughs> yeah, they're cheering you on. Everybody bring it on. Miss Mary here, yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. I, I, I go to my announcer voice, and then every time we do this show, I kind of get in this kind of serene, kind of like a calm voice. Because I, I try to have a voice like Mary. Mary's got like a voice like no other. I'm rubbing I mean, off on you. She, yes. Voice, my voice. <laughs> the calm, peaceful voice caused, is rubbing off on you. Caused a, a, bit of a, a bit of a pause there, but... <laughs> Uh, no, so like like her voice, just we we didn't have anything prepared this week. Uh, we we were trying to do like a poem every week to kind of yeah. talk about like like Mary's voice is just really calming. So if you want a, uh, um, somebody to read bedtime stories to you, and uh, she cannot be there in person, she does charge by the hour. So <laughs> any book that you want to send her, her uh, your um, her your your her your any, any book you want to send her, <laughs> uh, she can read for you at the low low cost of ninety ninety nine ninety five uh, per <laughs> per page. <laughs> but uh, her voice is very calming. Hi, hello, Miss. Hello, Ms. hello, Sorry. hello. I went, I went off on a tangent there. Yeah. Um, so every week we do talk about emotions and feelings, and um, I, I'm trying to, I think, believe, uh, well, at least what I believe we're trying to do is connect with all of you out there. Hi, Padmita. Uh, connect with all of you out there and uh, show you that you're not alone in this whole process. You are not alone in life, yeah. in feelings, and emotions, and all the ups and downs. You're not alone. <laughs> We're all there. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, uh, I, I think in in the time that I spent with Mary, I've learned, uh, especially being on the show, to be a little bit more vulnerable and get to a place where I feel more comfortable in the emotions. I think so much of our time is spent battling and trying mm -hmm. to fight that those emotions don't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, like like when you fall in love, it's like, ah, no, mm -hmm. no, it can't be. No, no. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, he loves me. Oh, oh, that's too much. I got to go. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a lot of that stuff, but or if we're feeling insecure, right? A lot of the times we'll we'll put up a front, right? We'll get we'll get that tough guy attitude or whatever it is. It's like we're always we always seem to be denying yeah. these emotions that are happening within us, and that is, I think, the poison to society or and to everyone. I mean, like the, that's the poison of humanity right now is denying yeah. oneself of your emotions. You really think that's fear? I you know I think a, pe a lot of people are led by fear. Oh, right absolutely, now. it's fear, one hundred percent. What do you think they're afraid of? Being exposed, looking stupid, you know, we've got these ideas of how we're supposed to appear to everyone. And, uh, you know, there's the fear of looking weak, there's the fear of looking stupid. Somehow we don't, we're afraid to just be authentic and, and mess up in front of people. I mean, when we were kids, we didn't care. Yeah. Right. We were dancing in front of everyone. We didn't care what we looked like. We were we would sing at the top of our lungs. We did not care. And so um, a lot of that has to do with the shame, you know, and, yeah. and some of our different patterns in, in what we were uh, programmed with growing up and in our upbringing, upbringings and things like that. You know, so. I'm stumbling on words, too. too you, know, just, <laughs> you know, I do remember, um, you know, when my grandma was alive, uh, they'd always whip out these pictures of me when I was like two or three years old and I'd, I'd walk around butt naked uh -huh. just run around and and my grandma I mean and th this is part of my some of my trauma but my grandma's like oh my god you have such pretty legs and you know I'd be running around you know like like a two-year-old without a diaper on mm -hmm. and just completely naked and they have a picture of me and this is like completely child porn by the way there's a picture of me out there in the ether somewhere out there of me naked on a couch somewhere just kind of enjoying life but but the essence of what that is is just just pure pure enjoyment, right? Pure innocence, pure not caring, pure just being one hundred percent a kid. Yeah, I was gonna say you must have grown <laughs> up in my house because my kids are all nudists. Oh <laughs> yeah. boy, oh, we're revealing to it today on the inner journey. We reveal way too much about ourselves. It is, it is an innocence, and there's so much yeah. repression of a lot of things that um, I've talked to you about before that. Yeah creates that like this shame body that we all carry around um you know and, and yeah. with the comment of it's child porn it's it's really not it's you were running around naked as a baby you know <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, I did that to accentuate a point yeah but i i know what you're saying yeah. <laughs> but i mean but that's really how a lot of people would see that yeah you know they would see that and and there would be a lot of controversy if that was put out there well then the next question to my grandma was like why are you taking a picture of that because <laughs> <laughs> it's cute i mean uh, uh, granted i'm two and it's like tiny so you know i want to be remembered for something oh 
was larger. C- C- <laughs> <laughs> it was cold. It was really cold. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, today, like I said, uh, I, I think what a lot of this is, and I had a really great conversation today, um, you know, with, with somebody who's going to be on the show tomorrow. Um, we had a good conversation about fear and indecision and where where that lies in our lives. And, and I think a lot of what we hesitate about and where, you know, our lack of direction sometimes is indecision, not choosing one direction or another because we're just caught in making the wrong one. You know, and, and as kids, we didn't care about that. You know, we just cared about, like, having fun and, and getting in the dirt. Like, right now, like, today, I'm a germaphobe. I don't like touching dirt and stuff. But I do remember, you know, like, being, like, three, four, somewhere around there, three or four, like, making mud pies in the backyard and not caring, not giving a shit, honestly. But today, it's like, oh, why would, why would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> where, and and, the, and, the, and the, the contemplative part is where in that whole process we lost that. You know, what age did it just kind of, you know, separate from that? You know, that's just a point of curiosity. Yeah. I, I don't think it's one particular age necessarily, unless you had a severely traumatic event. I think it's just yeah. the years of um, all these ideas and thoughts and, and, and uh, expectations from people about, you know, what we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to look like from all different inputs, you know, from school, from work, from parents, from peers, from all these different things. So... I think it's just a breakdown and that's what we're trying to break yeah. through i think is to get back to our authentic selves to be <laughs> able to fully express ourselves to be silly to yeah. let go and to have fun and to realize we're all just a bunch of little kids running around together yeah and i, and I think really the the reflection upon all this is that we uh strive for a sense of significance within our community whether it's that community is your family whether that community is your friends whether that community is an actual community we all strive for that and i think we are afraid to make those decisions sometimes mm-hmm. because we don't want that negative feedback we don't want to be told that we de- made the wrong decision that we want to be that we don't want to be told that we're in the wrong place at the wrong time and we avoid that so much that it leads us not to decide on the path we're, we're intended to go yeah. And there's there's so many opportunities that this life brings you, whether it's God, the universe, your, your, that spiritual body that brings you these things. If you're so caught up in the indecision, you miss out on the opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's I guess that's the point I wanted to start with today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is the point you wanted to start with, I guess. And I think that the whole goal and what we're trying yeah. to accomplish in this journey that we're on is to become so confident in ourselves that we don't. We don't need the approval of, of everyone else for our thoughts. We can show yeah. up authentically. We can show up truly. We can speak our truth and love ourselves enough that we're going to make this decision. And, you know, it doesn't matter what other people think or say. We're going to speak our truth, and it doesn't matter what people think or say. And that's going to allow us the, the opportunity to make decisions faster, you know, to be able to move in directions we want to move in because we're not stuck in hesitation wondering what people are going to say, yeah. think, or give us feedback on because we don't care anymore. And that all comes with that deep self-love and self-acceptance that we're always talking about. And this is why we do what we do on a daily basis to uh, get to that space. And, and and the transition to that, the thing that we wanted to talk about today was, if you guys tuned in last week, we, we started this, this program. Um, uh, I wouldn't say program, maybe a book. It's a book. So um, <laughs> Mary came in and I was so grateful and I want to share gratitude because it's, that's day one. I want to share gratitude that uh, there's somebody in my life that, that cares about me enough to that wants to help me grow. And it was it was in this book that we've decided to, to take on this this little mini, journey. Mini, mini journey, journey. Yeah. mini journey together. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put that up on on the thing here. So the magic um, yeah. it's it's a, a deviation or maybe a, a, a secondary book to the secret. I don't know if you um, yeah, she's, I don't think it's a deviation or anything from it. She's just the same author and it kind of uses some of the concepts from the secret, which is all about the law of attraction, like maybe a know, supplement, probably a supplement. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Because a lot of that book <laughs> talks about is, you know, like attracts like what you think you create and so this kind of dives a little bit more into that specific section about gratitude you know because gratitude they talk about in the secret quite a bit and that's it's um that's basically how you create you get into the state of gratitude and you attract things when you're in the state of gratitude like 
Um, so she, I guess that's a deeper dive into the gratitude yeah. section of The Secret. Yeah, and see, I've, I've read The Secret before, but it's been years. And the thing I remember about The Secret was all these kind of lofty ideas about how to project and how to get to a certain point. But it wasn't really articulated how to get there, like a step-to-step -step thing, where I think in, in yeah. terms of this book, that kind of gives you more of a step-by-step -step yeah. daily process. So this is, I guess if there was uh, more of a hands-on kind of perspective, um, this would be more of it. Yeah, I kind of look at the secret as like the, the doorway into the work of yep. learning about the laws of the universe, um, starting with the law of attraction. And this is more of like a how to create more gratitude. It kind of gives you a little bit of a, a more of a guidance on yep. how to because that's kind of just like an overview and like an op it's a, it's for me, that book itself was my foot into the door of discovering an entire new world you know, um, where I realized that my thinking matters and um, yeah. what I think about, I attract. And, and so it led me down a, a, a much deeper path, but it was the, it was the doorway. And so this kind of takes you a little bit further in and yeah. a little bit deeper into the, to the how to's to get into that mindset versus just, okay, great. This is, you know, it's like an overall explanation and then, yeah. okay, what do you do now? You know, so this kind of takes you a little bit deeper into that. So, so we started the book last week. Uh, I, um, I screwed up. Or we should be on day seven by now. Um, I, I screwed up. I missed day three last week. And if you do follow the book uh, verbatim and what they require of you, you, if you miss a day, you have to go back two days. Yeah, and the and reason for that is because the momentum that you've built up kind of gets lost if you skip a few yeah. days. So, yeah. I, I do get that point. Um, and, and so uh, currently we're both on day five. Yes. And so uh, we're going to go over the days real quickly. You, you, you want. Day one is... Uh, day one is just uh, about all about counting your blessings. It's yeah. about basically the the fundamentals about gratitude, and it introduces us to the first practice, which we were, we take into the remaining of the twenty eight days, which is um, ten days of counting your blessings, ten things that you're grateful for, and yeah. not just. So I want to make a point that it's it's um, it's not just writing down simple things that you're grateful for the yeah. whole point which you read in the chapter because you read the, the few pages is that you have to get into that feeling of it so that's why it has yeah. you write those things really read them back to yourself kind of get into that feeling of yeah. being grateful and really feeling thank you thank you because um it's it's the energy that you put out it's not necessarily the ho it's kind of like the how you doing great thanks you know or it, it doesn't the, the passive, mean anything yeah. when it doesn't have the emotion behind it. It doesn't have right. that feeling behind it. So anyway, that's where we learn about that. Am I going into the rest of the days so far? Uh, you know, I, as far as my reflection, you know, um, I, there there is a very logical side to me. And the thing I've challenged myself with, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's gender. I don't know if it's being a, me being a man, if it's being me just being me. I'm always, I'm very logical. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are certain aspects, you know, that that feels very hokey <laughs> and which which I know, like normally, like years in past, my, the older me would have been kind of um, kind of dismayed from them. Like, oh, OK, the magic, right? the wording. OK, uh, yeah. let me feel gratitude today. You know, you know, there's there's a, there's a bit of me that feels dismissive, but I know that. You know, I have to trust that the process mm -hmm. I have to trust that, you know, the people in and the things that are brought in my life at this point in my life are brought there for a reason. Yeah. So I have to embrace them despite my dismay with them or despite my, un I guess, uncomfortableness with it, that I have to embrace it. And so the, the challenge with day one is is really stretching and seeing what I'm really grateful for. Mm -hmm. And my reflection on day one doesn't really have anything to do or anything at all to do with things that I have owned. You know, things that I purchased, like a house, a car, a career, it had all more to do with people. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. You know, so that, that's been the biggest reflection on day one. And, and again, this is stuff for you guys to explore. Mm -hmm. If that's the same meaning for you, go for it. But uh, on me, day one was really reflective, like, wow, this, uh, you know, I've always kind of known that people uh, serve a greater interest and, and, they, and they serve you um, in, in your goals and where you're going. But to, but to actually put it out there on paper, to write it down, to be grateful, I mean, that, that took a little mm -hmm. bit more effort mm -hmm. than, than uh, because I think it's so easy to say, you know, they didn't do enough and this person didn't mm -hmm. do enough. And, you know, this person isn't really that good for me, but I still talk to them. You know, it's so easy to, to, to switch off to that negative component, the negative perspective. But when you actually move it to positive, it's a challenge. It and, can and, be. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you're, if you're, if you're absolutely, if you're, uh, standard programming is to go to 
what's wrong, what you're not getting, what's wrong with people, what you don't like, it can be a challenge to sit. And that's why the book is such a blessing Yeah. because, and, and then how about, go, what about uh, the transition between going from what's wrong to what's right to actually feeling something about what you write down? That was the other part too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, because a lot of times, well, we can say all the time, we're, oh, I'm grateful for the sun in the sky, my comfortable bed, the house. I have a house. I'm grateful for my kids. But do you ever really feel the gratitude behind that? You know? And good, thank goodness we're going to have a hundred and, or we're going to have 128 gratitudes by the time we're done. And you'll be surprised at, uh, Boy, how I thought it was just 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so that's my reflection on day one. Day one was just kind of a little bit eye opening, a little bit uncomfortable, but I, again, I know the whole process. Um, <laughs> and I will say the word magic is, is used like really overdone. And, and we were talking about it before the show and, and she did provide some perspective regarding the word magic, but me being the somewhat stoic, me being more of the logical mind, I'm like, okay, this is a little hokey. Because they do use the word magic a lot, you know. So I will, I will prepare you for that. But I, I, you know, once you look past that, you're like, okay, I, I really start seeing the benefit, especially when you start getting the latter days. So that was day one. For day me. one. Day, <laughs> one. <laughs> day two. So day two was the magic rock. Yes. Right. So what do you think about that one? Um. Uh, so okay, I have to start it off with frustration. Okay. <laughs> so I got to get that out of the way first. <laughs> I am still looking for my rock. Oh my gosh, I'm going to bring you a rock. Uh, you know, it's not because. A, there's not, it asks you to look for a river rock because <laughs> it's got to be smooth, right? So every rock that I come across is just rigid and I'm like, that's not the right one. That's not, hmm. again, me being the stoic, me being more of a logical. Again, I don't know if that's kind of the male traits. Like I have to find the right rock. And so in lieu of that, what I've done is just leave the book on my nightstand and just kind of feel Use it. Because part of the process is to actually feel. And I, and I think it's for those people who need that more tangible kind of component. Mm -hmm. You know, like like we can talk about feelings all day. We can talk about emotions all day. But to actually feel something, it gives you kind of more of a real world or, or kind of like a, a tangible aspect of what we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the basically the overall is that at the end of the day, you hold your magic rock and this yeah. is a gratitude rock. And you'll read more about that. But <clears throat> you have to think through the events of your day and then stumble upon the the, what is it, the, the thing you're most grateful for, the best thing that happened to you today. Oh. And so the idea behind that is, and this is all logical, if you really <laughs> read into what is happening and, and how I explained the dopamine and the serotonin last week, is that as you're sitting there and you're going, okay, what was the best thing that happened to me today? What is your brain doing? It's sorting through every good thing that has happened to you through the day so you can find the best thing that has happened to you. And what does that do to your brain chemistry? You start releasing the dopamine and the yeah. in serotonin. And um, is it serotonin? Am I using the right uh, word? It's serotonin and dopamine. All the good feely chemicals that your brain releases. Oh. And then you're getting, and then you're literally putting yourself in a position where right before bed, you're getting to that state of feeling good, feeling happy, feeling joy, you know? Well, I, I will That's say- That's the whole point. I will say just like, even this book itself, it's not its not shiny, it's not glossy, it's not very matte. It's its more like a satin and it's got its own texture to it. It does. So it's, it's it, okay. I don't know It'll if, work for I, now. I don't know if I'm getting too off. intimate. I'm just, I put it on my <laughs> chest and I just kind of feel. And, and again, is it weird as it would be like 10, 15 years ago in my state of mind today? It's just like, you know what, this this really feels you know good to kind of just embrace this. Yeah. And really what I was rejecting was just kind of the, the connection you, I had with you. Mm. You know, that, that connection, like, hey, this person brought me this in my life and it means something. And I have to look past kind of how I feel about the hokiness, how I feel about the magic word mm -hmm. and say, you know what? OK, so this is brought to me for a reason. If I focus in on the negative, I will miss the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I embrace the opportunity. And, and so I don't have a rock and I have this. I have this is my rock. OK, you are my rock. Your, your, your rock is right there on my nightstand <laughs> and I see it and I just feel it. And, and then that's my part in, in day two. So day two is, I think, is to make that those gratitudes more of a tangible connection. Yeah. You know, yeah. which which I feel is, is a completely different benefit, especially if you're more of a logical mind like myself. And here's the thing is that what you're talking about is beautiful because yeah. you're taking the risk to do something uncomfortable, which is what I live my life by, right? It's like, that's uncomfortable. That scares me. I have judgment on that. Okay. There's something for me to learn there. Let's do it. And the fact that you're 
Yeah. Overcoming that, stepping in and going, okay. And you're recognizing all the ways that you're, all the things that are coming up around doing it. I mean, that's a beautiful thing because there's going to be something so beautiful. There's so, I say beautiful a lot. I know. I, there's <laughs> something so great for you on something the other side. Something magical about There's that. something <laughs> magic for you on the other side of that. Uh, being willing to step into the comfortable, step into the yeah. unknown, let loose, you know. Because, I mean, there, there's a part, again, there, there's such a battle with me, you know, between the old me and the new me. <clears throat> Um, where I feel like an idiot, I'm like, okay, it's just, it's just a book. I'm like, uh. <laughs> and it's so weird that I like, I, I literally look around, mm. like, who's watching me? Mm. You know, and I'm like feeling this thing, and I'm like, okay, is this weird? <laughs> I mean, there's nobody's here to judge me. I mean, Violet's there, but I'm like, nobody, nobody's there to judge me. I mean, she thinks I'm weird anyway. I mean, so there's really no different than any other day, you know. Uh, but I'm there feeling this book. I'm like, it's kind of comforting in a way, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so once you kind of get past, I think yourself. And and really what it was reflective on me is I'm bringing in things from my past mm -hmm. into my present moment. And I'm like, okay, so nobody's watching me. Nobody's watching me cuddle this book. So it's it's fine. Okay, get over yourself. Well, and it's But really, I do need to find my rock. I will bring you a <laughs> Day rock. Day I have a rock. lot of them, and it will be the best rock. Um, <laughs> and I think that that's – I think it's amazing what you're going through through this process already. So uh, day, day three, three. magical relationships. So this is the one where we – really dive into the relationships in our lives yeah. and how often is it that we complain about the people in our lives the people we love the most and uh how often is it we're looking at what's wrong with people versus what we love about them and so this day was about focusing on uh the three people that were close in your life that you could c basically carry a picture around you write yeah. some positive attributes about them and you really sit throughout the day you pull their picture out a few times and you reflect on the things that you're grateful for about these i will tell you the the magic that happened in my life on this. <laughs> I, I have been having a little bit of struggle struggles with my, my kids. Yeah. Um, and they're absolutely the closest relationships in my life. Um, my my teenager in high school is he's kind of <laughs> he's a little bit struggling a little bit in school because since co since the COVID lockdown and going online, it's like he just became disinterested, you know. And so now it's this this kind of struggle. And I found myself complaining a lot about that, you know. Why doesn't he care? And and with my daughter and my son, my my eight year old twins. Um, they can be a handful. They can be a lot of energy. And my daughter's very strong-willed. And so I was finding myself in a lot of struggle with her, yeah. personal struggle with her. And I will tell you, the day that we did this, I sat and I, um, I, I can, I'm way woo-woo. So I did a visualization along with um, <laughs> my list of positive attributes yeah. about them. But I just sat and thought about, like, what do I appreciate about them? What do they bring into my life that brings so much joy? And I wrote all those things down, and I got to this space of, like, oh, my gosh, they're just amazing little people, you know? Then on top of it, I took my own initiative and went into this little visualization of seeing ourselves having a great, a great evening together, you know, laughing, um, there's no fighting, there's no, you know, back and forth about homework. No. And I will tell you that evening was one of the greatest evenings we've had together as a family in a very long time. You know, we had dinner together, we were laughing. I ended up asking my 16 year old if he yeah. wanted to go on a walk with me and the twins. He said yes, which he hardly ever says yes to. We went on a walk and they were playing and I just sat back and went, wow. It's because I got into a new, it's not some magic that happened though. Yeah. That's the thing about it is that it changed me and my state so much so that I showed up differently when I came home from work, right? I was in a more loving space. My heart was more open, which allowed them to kind of s sit back and, and probably not feel as much uh, tension, you know what I mean? Which allowed yeah, yeah. them to, to want to go on the walk and have a little bit more fun and loosen up a little bit. So there's so much science behind all of this. It's just the words in the book are kind of. Yeah, funny, you just right? you can't really like uh, again, like I'm more of the logical mind. So you can't really get lost in, in what they're trying to do. Um, you know, it, it's almost like uh, uh, I have a friend that's like, oh, my God, you're so beautiful and you're so fantastic. And, and the words over exaggerate <laughs> a lot of how she's feeling. Um, but in, in a way, it feels good, especially when she's embracing you and hugging you. And, you know, there's there's different aspects. But if you get caught up in the words, then you miss out on the feeling. So I yeah. think that's been the best, the, the point of reflection on, on uh, just like you can see I'm doing what I do at night. The, okay, so this is judgment. not what I do at night. But here's the scientific thing behind <laughs> it is, is is all the things that we're doing here, as yeah. though they may seem hokey, just change your emotional state. Correct, yeah. 
you know, and that's that's the bottom line to it. And what I would love to bring to the world for me is the ability to take this, you know, fuzzy, foofy, whatever, yeah. and show the science behind it and why it works because it really does work. So that was my experience with uh, magical relationships. I had a great evening and I've continued to have great evenings, albeit not perfect every night, but just remembering that like all the things that I'm grateful for. I've actually added on yep. to mine because um, I tend to be an overachiever. So writing three things that I'm grateful for about yep. everybody, you know, everybody closest to me in my life on a daily basis, along with writing my 10 gratitudes. So you can supercharge this by adding, <laughs> by adding, adding extra yeah. gratitudes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's just nice that, uh, so so day one is an ongoing process. Yeah. So day one, you have to list out what you're grateful for. And, and typically- Ten things, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> typically, um, like I said, for me, it's people. It's all connected to people in some way. But it forces you to reflect upon that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like prayer, like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. It's 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 this um, reassertion, maybe. <clears throat> uh, it's it, it's it's- it's a, it's almost this ritual where you're forcing yourself to think about things in terms, um, if there was a, a word positive versus negative, mm -hmm. you know, because it's so easy to slip into that negative realm and say, you know, this person isn't good enough, this person doesn't do enough, um, you know, I got in this relationship because they were so fun and now now they just sit on the couch, you know, I can't I can't believe them. It's so easy to go there. Not and, just with and people, with things, things right? With things we have in our life. Yeah, like I'm still waiting for my Tesla, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very grateful if somebody bought me a Tesla. <laughs> Just kidding, uh, but that's that's day four. So mm -hmm. um, uh, day five. Oh, you were you were going into the prayer thing? Was that? Oh, was I going into prayer? Go oh yeah. So 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 prayer in itself is is a repetition. You know, it's it's the words used over and over again, and it gives us a sense of reassurance. But it also is that building block to uh, focus, to stay focused on the idea of what prayer is. You know, um, uh, praying and and connecting and staying in that, that realm with that person or that thought. Um, very similar to what they do here in, in the magic book um, or the magic is that they, they keep you there in that sense of appreciation, mm -hmm. you know, that gratitude. And uh, from day one, that's one of the things that's it's regurgitated over and over again. It's counting your blessings versus a lot of times when you think about, you know, how I used to pray, right? I used to pray if it's, please help me with this situation. It's so horrible. This person's not doing yeah. this. This person's not doing that. It's like prayer can be, it can go both ways, you yeah. know? And it's like, re it, whether you call it prayer, whether you call it whatever it is, it's like, are you praying, begging for mercy and yeah. begging for like something to change because ever, all the things that are wrong? Or are you praying, giving thanks, right? And I think that's where people get lost in, yeah. in that, you know, prayer. And I, and I think people do, and, and that's probably that probably hinders on the secret, is taking those actions, taking those actionable steps into making whatever you're praying for materialize. Because yeah. you can pray all day, but it doesn't work unless you actually do something about it, unless you actually make the change very active. Yeah. You know, and that could be small. That, that, that could be as small as telling your spouse or telling somebody you love that's like, Hey, I, I prayed for you today because I feel that you're in a, in a in not a particularly good place. And I and I and I definitely see the the uh, uh, the possibilities, the opportunities mm -hmm. there. I, I don't know if you see it for yourself, mm -hmm. you know. And taking a small action, just even mentioning it or having that conversation, is that step, yeah. you know. So that's that's one of those things about prayer that yeah. I think that is missing. It's it's not just about praying and putting it out there, but it's also taking some action within yourself yeah. to make that manifest too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So day five. All right, day we're five. We're almost we're at the end of the show, by the way. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> so we gotta so go we through got, day we've five. We've got the magical bit. health, right? Yes. Um, the last thing. One. The last thing we're on <laughs> is magical health. <laughs> <laughs> is it money or health? Health. So we've got the relationships, mm. health, and then money. So the health. Um, yes. It's about really like. Um, and this one has been a struggle for me considering I'm recovering uh, was recovering from COVID and still dealing with the ramifications of the backlash yeah. of what all that created. And it's really just taking the time to like think about all the blessings of all the health that you do have, no matter what may be going on yeah. with you in a health, in a health situation. You're alive, right? You're alive. Your eyes, it, you know, everything may not be working. Maybe your eyes are working. Give great, give gratitude for that because whatever you give gratitude for, you're going to receive more of. It's just the way it works. And I don't know how it works. We could probably break down the science of it, but, you know, taking the time to really 
be thankful for your fingers work. What do you get to do with your fingers? How many times do we take for granted yeah. the fact that we can smell a rose, you know, the fact that we can taste chocolate, whatever it is that you love to taste. <laughs> Mine wouldn't be chocolate, it'd be chicken wings, but still, <laughs> you know, it's like, what are we taking for granted? I like old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are we taking for granted? You know, and it's taking the yeah. time to really think about these things. And this book is all about mindfulness, which is what I'm, preaching and talking about every single day. So it was really great for me to be able to see myself as healthy, um, to be able to like honor my body, what it's going through and to be able yeah. to be grateful for the things that are really going well with my body and all the normal daily operations that my body's still going through. You know, I'm breathing, I'm tasting now and smelling now because <laughs> I, I lost that for a few days, right? Yeah, you you sure miss it when it's gone. You really miss it when it's gone, but how often are you grateful for it when it's there? You know, and that's what I think this book is trying to get us to to realize is that we can we yep. can take our state. We can put ourselves in a higher state if we just take a moment to think about all the good. Right. So health was a health was a great one for me to really stop and, and uh, think about what was well, actually working in my body right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, since since it's the end, uh, we're at 30 minutes. Miss. Okay. I, I know we go off on a tangent. I know we do. So so today is day five and we're in the middle of it. We're in the middle. I, I didn't have any dollars. I don't know who does anymore besides, you know, strippers. I do. I but do. No, <laughs> hey, no. <laughs> um, I'm not saying Mary's a stripper, but no. she did have dollars in her pocket. So, um, you know, part of the process is to write on here regarding money and uh, recognizing that. Um, um, well, what is it recognizing? Recognizing all the money that you've received, all the experiences that you've had throughout your life to this point. That yep. costed money. Maybe when you were a kid, how many things did you get to, to vacations? Did you get food? Yep. Did you get, you know, clothes? Like all, thinking about all the things that you've received in your life that costed money. So thank you for all the money that I've received in my life up until this point. Because you've clearly received money. You're alive. Yep. You're flourishing. You're clothed. You're bathed. You know, all these things. Yeah, right? I, you I, have think electricity. That, I think the, the onset of the chapter was to reflect upon being a child and yeah. not having to worry about it. Exactly. How many things did you get? that costed money that you did yep. not even have to worry about. So so well, as we're in the middle of the day, um, you know, we're still kind of going through that. If you want to follow us and you want to do this process with us, so we are on day five. Today is officially day five. If yeah. you get the book, I'm, I'm going to put that back up here real quick. Um, it is the magic. Again, if, for those stoics out there, the for the non-hokey people, get, get over yourself. And yes, <laughs> magic can be fun. Just be a kid and enjoy the word magic. And, and really and really see behind the door and look at that the book has um, uh, different components and different trajectories where I think if you if you let go of some of those <clears throat> those tangible things those things that kind of hang you up that you just have fun with it yeah just have some fun see where it takes you you yeah. know and, if and, it makes you feel a little bit good then great it's done its job it's not you know and I, and I think having an accountability partner, you know, like Mary's my accountability partner, yeah. you know, um, to, to be in your life and say, hey, I'm with it. Are you on day three? And I'm like, shit, I'm on, <laughs> I missed today. And, and I I'm like, great, I'm going to go back I with gotta you. I'm going to go back you know? two days. Yeah, I screwed up last week and I had to go back two days. Start all over again. So part of the book is like, you can't just miss a day. If you miss a day, you got to go back. You know, so part of that's the motivation. But, you know, having somebody in your life that wants to mm -hmm. embark upon that journey is so great. And, you know, I am so grateful for that. You know, that was actually one of the things on my list was, was Mary, you know. Aww. she uh, You were uh, on mine, too. Oh. <laughs> anyway, but no, I, I am I'm really grateful that you're here. We're doing this show, and we're able to reflect upon and help other people out there. So if you guys have any comments or questions regarding anything we're doing, regarding any of the just nuances or silly stuff that we're doing, there is some tangible things and some things we're really trying to reach out to you guys and help you with. And uh, hopefully we're doing it in this process. But. Yeah. Miss Mary, and you have I, any last word? I was just going to say that, like, we're all human, right? I've been going through some struggles yeah. with the recovery and uh, emotionally, physically, on all of it. And uh, this is just another one of the tools that I'm using in my life right now to um, this and our accountability around it and the fun we're having around it to just kind of pull myself through that process and to be able to reflect and learn a little bit more about myself. Yeah. And um, I think that, you know, the bigger learning is going to come towards the end of the book when we have a lot more to reflect on, but I'm really grateful to be doing this with you too. Yeah. And it's, it's so within me to be like selfish and be like, you know, Mary's my Mary. 
this is, that's my Mary. Nobody's going to borrow her. You know, uh, she's my accountability partner. Uh, but the, the, you can reach out to her. You can reach out to us and, uh, you know, connect with us. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop those in the comments section. We'll get back to them as we can. But um, I'm, I'm all, we're all done for this week, Miss. Yay, we're and, done. Anything else like, that you want to talk yet, about? Not yet, we're done, but no, that's it. Thank so you. we're on day five. Again, mm. if you go back to The Magic, if you get your own copy, if you go down to Barnes & Noble, Wherever, or the audio version. Uh, actually, I don't think there's an, there's audio, not version. an audio version yeah, because it's really not an audio book. But if you do get that, get that copy, you can follow us along. Day five today, tomorrow will be day six. Yeah, we could start a little like, comment thread or Facebook. I don't care what it is. If you, it doesn't matter what day we're on. Let's just let's just go through it together. Let's just roll it. So if you guys have any, like I said, comments, questions, go ahead and drop those. We'll catch you guys um, next week. Adios. <laughs> I did your. <laughs>